Hello, welcome back um, to part two of the show with Richie Humphreys, uh, who needs no introduction. Neither does Ray Matthews, actually, uh, a celebrity uh, of ultra running. And we're going to talk to him about something called the Round Rotherham, which is, uh, well, I mean, unbelievably, uh, Richie might sort of try and quantify this in his mind. Round Rotherham is 50 miles. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So round the boundary of Rotherham is 50, 50 miles. And uh, you did it. Uh, a few years ago, didn't you? Yeah. But you decided that wasn't enough. No, because like two years prior to that, I uh, decided to. It, I was looking to run 100 miles, so I did it twice. Yeah. And that didn't quite seem enough, so it coincided with the anniversary of the founder of the race itself, which is, is the 50 mile circumference of Rotherham, mm -hmm. were put together during his time during a steel strike uh, and it was meant to be um, it meant to be a tournament of um, of teams so yeah. teams of eight stages uh, and of course before that so one or two people have thought must have a go at all yeah. of it which they did and and uh, some amazing times, you know. We're like we're talking six hours to run, to run it. But you ended wow. up doing 150 miles yeah. by doing it three times. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, well, it yeah, coincided yeah. with the 30th anniversary of the yeah. founder of it, who was a guy called Ralph Robotham. Yeah. And, so, um, what's next? I mean, I, I'm going to ask you this in a couple of minutes because you did something at 75. You're now almost 78. You're threatening to do something at 80, right? That's <laughs> I'm going to ask you about shortly. Um, and maybe I won't tell you, but... <laughs> well, I'm going, to, I'm going to see if I can find out. I know, I know that you're planning something. You can maybe hint. Uh, James joins us. Do you know, I found out something uh, that I didn't know about Richie, Richie Humphreys, when right. I was researching this show. And, um, oh, we'll have a look at it, actually. Let, let, let's let's oh, have no. a look at it. Right, OK. Oh, here we go, yeah. Uh, you, do you know, you obviously know about this. Uh, this was on Twitter from... Uh, at Bet365, the, the five fastest shots ever recorded in football. Uh, there we go. Ronnie Heberson sporting Lisbon, 131 miles per hour. David Hurst in second place. I always thought David was in first place, actually. That was for Sheffield Wednesday, 114 miles per hour. That was at Highbury, wasn't it? I think it was. Hit the bar. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The bar. So the <laughs> and it's the bar nearly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's still rattled. Yeah. He rattled it. So you're in quite a good company here, because, you know, well, David, David Beckham, David Trezeguet, Richie Humphreys, spot on. Yeah. So, yeah. I, <laughs> and I, from my recollection, it's been like that since the mid-90s. Oh, we've well, not updated it. Well, I don't know. I, Did they not I don't it know now? if it was, a, it was a bit of new technology that came out on Sky and they measured every, every shot that looked like it was a hard shot. They measured, I remember Julian Dix hit a rocket yeah. of a penalty. Yeah. Um, and whether they continually do that, there must have been... Hard shots record. since. You you know, new, newer balls, ball. yeah, possibly. 95.9 I mean, miles an hour. You know, put the caption back. I like looking at it. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> we can no, do. But it, you, again, there's there's certain things that stay with you, and that's been with me. And you know, um, came that the goal, the chip against Leicester that I scored, brilliant, was second to David Beckham from the halfway line. So you kind of. You remember David Beckham's iconic goal. Have you seen yeah. his chip again? I have, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 well, just after that, I've been on Twitter. The Premier League tweeted the goal against Leicester. So yeah. my social media has been quite active in the last, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the last couple yeah. of weeks. So, um, but again, yeah, we, I'm happy to be in that company all day long. Amazing. Did it so go, that were you, that chip, then? Yeah. Well, have you seen it? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't realise it. I didn't realise. Yeah, was... didn't realise oh, we're only 18 at the time. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, I look a bit older now. Amazing. Did that shot go in, that fast one? No. Yeah, that's what was me, Did David. It? That was me against Villa. Yeah. Really? So it was the same day as Beckham from the halfway line. Right, OK. Right. Was it got overshadowed by Beckham from the halfway line. Oh, oh, right. I'm all right with that. I'm oh, fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic, though, isn't it? 95.9 miles an hour, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure they actually measure it every they time. They must do. They, they must must measure everything else, though. Yeah. So they must, they must be measuring that. It's stats know, mad, isn't so. it? Well, we'll just keep that, that, that <laughs> list as it is. Yeah, yeah you're happy for not. I'm happy, yeah. That's good, isn't it? Um... We talked about your fundraising effort. We're going to come uh, to Mind Charity and uh, Newman School at Rotherham in a moment. But um, Sheffield United, uh, and we talked sort of 
skim the surface about how well they've done. Premier League, obviously nobody signed as yet because it's very early days in the summer. Um, there will be signings for, for sure. Um, thoughts on... So Phil Jagielka's name naturally has, has come up um, and I, I know nothing other than using instincts and intuition and which tells me that there would be an interest you know in not only as a player I know he's 36 now but as a character and a leader you know it strikes me that he would fit straight into that dressing room you you you'd know Phil uh, not, not particularly. I don't actually. I think I um, missed out on playing against him. I may have played against him at, um, at the odd time. I know what a fantastic career he's had. Yes. I know how well he was thought of at Bram Lane when he was there and how well he's thought of at Everton. Um, he's played in the World Cup. You know, a, a tremendous career. Don't think he might not want to stop, wants to keep going. I'm not seeing anything of him saying that that's, that's me done now. So, Absolutely not. So, and that, what, what also what I'm doing is that, 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 that Chris and, and Paul Mitchell and everybody else will have the targets. Um, there'll be lots of names linked, of course, when any of the yeah. team gets promoted. Um, I, I would have thought, and I'm just, again, like yourself, thinking that they want to keep the majority of the, of the players together that, that got promoted. And there will be some signings, as you said. Um, will it be some experience from, from Premier League mm. um, previous years? Will it be players they think can, can go on, on from the Championship and play in the Premier League? We'll have to wait and see. And I, I think, again, everybody will be, be really interested as to see who United sign and when they do it. It's, it's that speculation, isn't it, Alan? We were speaking about it before we had that sort of we had our little sabbatical a couple of weeks ago and we were, we were just saying that this time of year everyone's bandying these names around and you know particularly Alan and you know to an extent myself as well people are asking have you heard anything have you heard this have you heard that Richie when does it that, when does the business start happening obviously people are putting feelers out early doors aren't they but it doesn't start getting going really until sort of July time does it it, it, it can depend it could be somebody who signs a pre-contract so, or, or somebody yeah. signs immediately after their current contract runs out I'm going off the experience as a player in a changing room where you're hearing, oh, we might be signing him, we might be signing him, and you don't know anything until they turn up in the dressing room Correct. that next morning. You don't even know that they may have been to a medical. Everything's kind of kept quiet. So um, speculation, you know, is, is what it yeah. is. And I think um, there may be names banded around in as a support team. I think, oh, that'd be a good addition. Mm. Um, and you just don't know until it's over the line and done. And, and there's probably negotiations to be done, whether it's transfer fees or, or personal terms. There's lots yeah. and lots of, of work to be done. Um, and, you know, you, I think the supporters will be, will be backing Chris in, in, in whoever he signs. Well, yeah. most, most, of the name, most of the speculation doesn't come off. But there's usually a reason for it. And there's grades of it. I think with Phil Jagielka, it's people putting two and two together from, you know, the link. Uh, with uh, names like Neil Marpai of uh, Brentford, Ollie McBurney of Swansea, and also Britta Sombolonga at Middlesbrough, I'm pretty sure there's an interest in those three. OK, so that's <laughs> slightly an upgrade on uh, on those. And they're good strikers, each of them. Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. And you, know, and you would hope that the, you know, United will be getting linked with, with, with good players. Good players, yeah. Um, it's going to be an exciting um, time, I suppose, when the fixtures get released as well. Yeah. Um, people can have a look mm -hmm. at what's in the diaries um, and, and, and taking in home games, away games. And it's just an exciting time for the club, isn't it? It is. Jay Rodriguez, you know, I was reading the other day, yeah. uh, is a, because of a clause in his contract, is available from West Brom for £5 million. Mm. I mean, that to me, he's going to have huge Lots amount, of offers. There's going to be a huge yeah. amount of interest there. And again, it's. You know, everybody knows who the good players are, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's nailing them down and getting them in. Hopefully the courtroom stuff doesn't affect Sheffield United, but, no. you know, I think Chris Wilder, um, you know, despite the speculation about West Brom, whether he's committed to leading Sheffield United into the Premier League, but longer term that needs to be resolved, otherwise there's a risk of losing him. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, Does it concern you, that, when you um, look at it? I, th I think, well, I think, um, sort of like, you know, the staff and the players can't control what's going on on no. the outside. They'll be focused on, they'll have a date of pre-season, they'll be having off-season programmes and things like that. Their main focus yeah. will be fit, ready to go, especially the players. They want to be part of this, you know, want to get that first day of the season, want to be part of the starting eleven, or want to be in the squad, and that'll be their main focus on what happens, you know, with what's going on at the moment. Um, the players will, you know, will 
take care of their but own it, business. It is unsettling, isn't it, though? For, for, it has to be for, for people working in a football club if the th thing isn't right at the top. And it's remarkable that Chris Wilder, his management team, have blanked it and but led. It's the only thing he can do. You know, he, he can't, he can't that, wade in, can he? So he, no. I suppose it's the only thing that he possibly could have done. I know it's very admirable because a lot of people naturally will be drawn to it and it might yeah. unsettle them. But, and so big credit for obviously steering away from it. But, you know, realistically, in black and white, you can't do anything about it. That's that. Yeah. And that you know, he focuses on that. So that's true. That's what I view it. Yeah, diplomatic. Very pragmatic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. But longer term, it has to be, it has mm. to be sorted out. If they're going to compete, do you see them staying up? Yes. You do? And I'm and, and only going off what I saw of last season, how, how they play, how uh, positive they are, how on front foot they are. We'll, we don't know if that approach will change for, from game to game. They say not, honestly, on the record. You, no. You'd like to, you, you know, well, it's been enjoyable to watch. And I'm not saying that as a, because that's my club and that's who I watch as a kid. I'm talking yeah. from an experienced person within football or being a footballer. I've enjoyed going. I've enjoyed taking my, my little boy. My dad started going again, <laughs> watching United from yeah. because he's been watching me all, the, you know, all my yeah. career. So it's just been an and obviously winning helps. But it's the style, it's the it's the um, the approach to games to um, to take the games. You know, the, the way they played. It's been and it's, it's just been it's lovely to watch. And winning games does help, and obviously get promoted. Some uh, people Ronaldo say, "Oh, well. you can't play that, that that in the Premier League," but I'm. Well, from talking to uh, Chris Wilder and other people on the subject, I think they think they can. Mm. You know, obviously they're not going to win as many games, and there might be games, for instance, you wouldn't necessarily try and do it at Manchester City and uh, Liverpool. But, but they uh, might. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing they wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. But you're saying stick to what stick to what works. Try and shock a few people. I, th I think, like any newly promoted team. And you'll have heard it many times over the years that the home form will be vital, particularly at you know a place like Bramall Lane, where you know the crowd will get behind the team, um, and and way, away from home will they play with a, a freedom of going having a go, the newly promoted team, um, people obviously these days they know what's coming, they've got enough analysis, there's um, you know enough footage to watch games etc they know what will be coming if they're going to play that way um, but from time to time this season they have ch slightly changed and changed yeah. system and, and formation mm. okay we'll talk about mind charity uh, mental health within within sport uh, they're all all linked up and what ray is doing with kids in school yeah. uh, which is helping not only their physical health but potentially their mental health mm -hmm. as well as exactly. they move into into life after uh, a roundup, you could be forgiven for thinking there's not a lot happening, but it's not just football, is it? No, it's not just football. No. Um, like you said, it is quite quiet at the moment. It's sort of that middle period where there's not a great deal else going on, Alan, apart from the Sheffield Eagles who are playing at the moment. Just to mark your card, though, on Sheffield Wednesday's Fernando Forestieri, um, you may remember he was actually cleared at a criminal court of uh, racially aggravating. Um, it was Jacob Mellis, wasn't it, the Mansfield Town player in last season's pre season? Well, he was cleared of any, any wrongdoing in court uh, earlier on this year, but now the FA have actually charged him uh, with uh, misconduct. It's uh, in relation to sort of that mass brawl that broke out in pre-season. So he's been charged today with that. Um, can't really say much more on that at the moment because we don't know what it's to really to do with. Um, elsewhere, um, we won't start with sort of transfer rumours or anything like that. If you do want your story in the next few weeks, whilst it's sort of a bit quieter, we want to feature as many local sports teams as we possibly can. So do tweet myself, James Gregg Seven on Twitter, or Alan Biggs, Alan Biggs One on Twitter, mm. and we'll read them out for you. We'll give your club a plug um, if we possibly can. Uh, meanwhile, the Sheffield Eagles, they got into the third round of the 1895 Challenge Cup. Uh, that was after they beat uh, Halifax 52 points to eight in Keithley last weekend. Mark Aston side, well, they really look like a bit of a mini slump. We've been waxing lyrical about them. We go off the air for a little two-week break. Next thing, they start losing. They lost four out of five. Uh, they're back in action this weekend. Featherstone Rovers at home. Do get up to the Olympic Legacy Park to go and watch that game because it'll be an absolute th uh, cracker. They're down to joint fourth in the moment, but still in that middle eight period um, in the Championship Rugby League's Championship. Uh, boxing on the horizon. Weekend after this one, Josh Warrington from Leeds, who's the IBF uh, World uh, Featherweight Champion, is fighting against Kid Galahad, also known as Barry Awad from Sheffield. He trains at uh, Dominic Ingalls Gym up in Winkerbank. Uh, he's a mandatory challenger for that fight, so that should be an absolute cracker as well. Um, golf, Ben Schmidt from Rotherham Golf Club. He's just 16 years old. Well. 
He won the Brabazon Trophy, which is one of the most prestigious men's amateur golf tournaments in the country. Danny Willits won it, amongst others as well. He's only 16. He shot every single round in the 60s. Also broke the course record at all Woodley Golf Course in Leeds as well with a 64 in his second round. That's some achievement, and it's thrust himself into the Walker Cup picture, uh, picture as well. Also, just to mark your card as well, I think just something's going to come up on the screen now. Um, at Fullwood Lawn Tennis Club on Tuesday the 18th of June, Robin Moore is playing um, at, she's playing there, she's actually taking on a challenge, it's remarkable, she suffers with PTSD, she's hitting 200,000 tennis shots in 30 days which is remarkable. She's got to hit a shot near enough every four seconds between the hours of 8 and 5 p uh, eight a.m. and 5 p.m. that day. Johnny Murray's going to be coming up to kickstart the afternoon session at about quarter to one. There'll be a few other celebrities there from the local Sheffield area. A little barbecue on. You can have a few drinks overlooking the tennis court. Um, there's some Pilates. There's cardio tennis. Um, and also, so Robin, credit to her, she's going all around the country taking on this challenge and it finishes off the week before Wimbledon. So Tuesday the 18th of June at Fulwood Tennis Club, uh, it'd be great to get as many people down there and supporting that cause as possible. Absolutely, good luck Rob, Robin. I mean it's all the weird and wonderful challenges that people mm. will take on and I know that you're nodding in appreciation <laughs> yeah. over there. Richie, um, tell us about your efforts for Mind Charity, uh, the importance of that and how people can contribute if they wish to. Um, well I did it for Mind Charity, I've done a, a, a few different endurance based events for different charities. Um, Mind have a, um, a partnership with the with the EFL, and so the little squiggle that you see on the back of everybody's shirt is the, is the Mind logo, um, and it was really important, particularly, I suppose, in sport, in my industry, in, in football, um, we have a, a 24/7 wellbeing helpline now at the PFA where players, um, current players, former players can can call. It's confidential. Um, so they can talk about any well-being issues, any anxiety, um, addictive issues. And, and what we've seen um, in the last few years is that um, the, the shift of, it was mainly ex-players um, calling uh, and, and seeking uh, help. Um, and, that, and that's now changed and, it, and it's more uh, current players that, right. that, uh, that, are, that are calling to speak to somebody to why have somebody think, on, the, on the other end of the phone. Why, why do you think that shift in well, it? I, 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 well, I believe it, you know, we, I think we are talking about it more openly in society. Mm. Yeah. And there is more awareness for it. And I think social media has probably helped and probably hindered in, in, it, in the roundabout way. But in terms of making people aware that it's okay to talk about it, I think certainly um, in in my, my own friendship groups, so we, you know, to, to speak about it, ask somebody if they're okay, ask again, um, and and within within football, um, you know, the the professional sport in you know in, in all sports, men's and women's sports, um, there there is a demand. There's you know there's you you know it's professional sport you have to win, you've got to achieve, um, and you know the, I suppose people want to talk about it, and if people are talking about it openly. And that they're finding that's helping them in, in their life or in their, their job. They can do that, or they can talk about it privately with your organisation. Absolutely. So yeah. either way, you know, it's whatever suits them therapeutically, isn't that, it? That's that's the, you yeah. know when we go into clubs, you know, they can they could approach me, but you know I can give them the number. They can put it in their phone. Um, it's not like they're coming to, to speak to you in front of people, and um, they can call them the number. And we have councillors all based all around the country where, where they can go and see them. It's interesting the increase, and uh, presumably players feel, as you say, safer uh, about doing it, but they do it con confidentially. And people make this mistake, don't they? They say, oh, he's earning like 50,000 a week, 100,000 a week. What's he got to worry about? Uh, in, a, in a way, that's pretty irrelevant, isn't it? Absolutely irrelevant, yeah. And I think yeah. the, the other um, why maybe people are current players are speaking out more. Or, or seeking help is because we've had former players really speak out um, right, yeah. in a, you know in a you know on bigger platforms in media mm. um, on, on documentaries etc about um, about their own mental health and what they suffered through their own sport and then after they'd finished um, getting help and then you know finding it, it was so helpful and they're in a better place now than they were and and I think that all of us we've all got a part to play in Again, in, in society, as we mentioned, with the, with the children at school. Yeah, because this links in, you know, <laughs> if we're going to try to curb this problem for the future, 
then we've got to pay That's maybe exactly get where it starts. kids to exercise as a yeah. way of life. You're saying yeah. that that has a... I, I think you know. that, yeah, and I, I think the big issue for me is the fact that we have, we're mollycoddle children. We don't allow them to blossom. We sort of, we do not give them challenges. And, and I know what being able to achieve a challenge does for you mentally. It sets you up. When kids leave school, they're straight into a challenge. If they're not ready for that world that's outside, <coughs> excuse me, then I see the problems that are occurring now as adults. Mm. Because we've, we've gone through an era of time where we've shielded children. Is there evidence much. that physical activity improves academic uh, performance? Yeah, there is, yes. there is that much evidence out there that, it, that it, I feel, I can't believe that the that government can't see the, the issue that's being caused by, we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make kids achieve. So they set the curriculum for the school is all about achieving targets. But if you've got an headmaster that is not orientated around sport, the first thing that suffers is physical activities. And they don't have to do physical activities and that's for me is a massive issue. Yeah. That's where for me is a big problem lies. Yeah. They need more physical activities. And the results from that I'm getting in already are astounding. And, and I am, there's many, much going to happen in the near future and I'm going to be working with an MP to, to turn this thing around okay. in schools. Well, that's, that's great. And I'm talking of turning around, uh, you, you, you're threatening to do something at the age of 80, which could turn you around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it like, just yeah. give us a, it's going to be in, another feat of endurance, I presume. Well, if, if I told you that, <laughs> and this sorry. might sound, I don't want it to sound facetious, it's just I'm lucky I can do what I do. I've got a body that allows me to do what I, it's, the, my mind comes along with my body and that's what's important. Mm. It's not physical activity and the lack of it as you get older is, is everybody's downfall. Mm. Age is, is no barrier. There is no reason. So you're, you're, you're going to do something even more extreme then than well, 75 marathons? Well, 75 marathons didn't flatten me, did it? Neither did the 150 miles. So I'm thinking... Because it was at the back of that 150 mile yeah. run that I came up with deciding that 75 marathons right. would probably be so about the end result. Mis mischievously, I'm thinking of 80 marathons in 80 days at the age of 80. Why not, why not leave it while I'm 100 and then do 100 <laughs> marathons? <laughs> 80 countries? Yeah. yeah. Across 80 countries. He can do it. He can do it. Yeah. I'll, be watching, I'll be watching and waiting to see what yeah. we're all yeah. waiting. No, he's we'll serious. Absolutely interesting. Yeah. Um, Newman, uh, we've only got 40 seconds, but yeah. you, you've, you've raised a heck of a lot for Newman yeah. School yeah. at Rotherham. And, and it's not I, just about I, raising, it's it's, it's, it's the awareness that I've brought together. And one of the big issues, again, with Newman School is that I am looking to integrate Newman School with mainstream kids right. so that they learn this to is a school, one another. school with children for Physical special needs. and yeah. mental issues. Yeah. And, and Richie, how much did you raise for, for mine? I set a target of, um, of, of £2,000. We went over that just right. on the night of before the marathon um, and put it on your Twitter if we can, if we've got time. All right, we will do it, yeah. <laughs> Follow Twitter, repeat of this on my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you to James, thank you to Ray and to Richie. See you next week, maybe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>